Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and love to us. Thank you, Father, for showering us with your goodness, and mercy, and love, and blessings. All your goodness we receive, Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. We know that we have to be established in the team. The God said that he is in our life, no matter what. Amen? No matter what. You have to be established in all these things. Amen? Hallelujah. Tablets. And the thing of God, the in establishing life, we are to strive for to become those things become established in our life. All the truth of God. Amen. Well we find those things in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Because that's the will of God for us. Amen. If we want to receive His promises, we receive His promise when we are establishing those things, and it's true. Amen. When you Bible in Jeremiah, chapter. chapter we want to see today and Jeremiah Jeremiah the prophet Jeremiah 31. We're going to start in verse 31. Amen. We know that everything that God promised, He fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Everything. You know, everything. Who can start the promise of God in our life? Ourselves. Ourselves, right. Because nobody can stop God. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Because we have to line up. Yes. We is true. We is proud and believe in promise. Embrace his promise. When a person, when a believer, embrace the promise of God, he line up with the world, with the truth. He believe it, right? Amen. Because this promise that we gonna start it today. That was the promise that God gave to Israel. Amen. The promise of a new covenant. Amen? You know what, what the Lord was talking about when he said that he was promised that new covenant to Israel it was the about the Messiah. Okay? Yes. This was a, a prophetic messianic prophecy. Amen. Jeremiah was speaking here at the end. Jeremiah 31 was a, uh, was a, a prophetic messianic prophecy. A messianic prophecy. Amen. Messianic prophecy. Let's, let's start in verse 31. Jeremiah 31, verse 31. 
Behold, the days are coming, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Amen. But like I said before, that was a messianic prophecy. Amen. A new covenant. Okay. Remember, it was the old covenant. They were living on the old covenant. The covenant that God gave to Moses. That was what they were living in those days. I mean, all the Jews, all the Israelites, all the Hebrew people were living under that covenant. And we know what was that covenant. In that covenant, they there were sacrifices, you know, every year. They had to obey God and everything God tell them, tell them to do. But you know, it was hard for them to fulfill God's law. Okay. And, and their sin wasn't removed from them. It was like, and the new covenant, thing, God was changing. It was prophesied to them, I'm going to change you because I'm going to give you a new covenant. Amen. And all the prophets started talking about that. You know, about the coming of Jesus. Even they didn't say the name of Jesus, but they were speaking about it. Amen? Amen. Uh, verse 32. Now, not that promise. I'm talking about that promise. Not the new, the new covenant. Okay? That new covenant. Said, not according to the covenant that I made with the fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of each other. That's not the same, that's not the same promise. It's not the same covenant. Okay? Not the same covenant. It's a new, that would say new, and not the same that gave to you when I take you out from the land of Egypt. Remember, they were a slave in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. My covenant. We, they brought, yeah, we know they brought the Quran, they disobeyed God. Remember when they were in the desert, what they did? They made idol. Mm -hmm. They revealed against Moses. And when they revealed against Moses, they were revealing against God because Moses was the prophet of God. God chose the men to lead his people to the promised land, and they revealed again. They revealed again. They may idle, and they say, they even they say, let's go come back to Egypt. We were eating good there. We were now. Nah, they were they were lying, and that's in the same way the believers some believers think when things get tough. What they say, I was living better when I was in the world lying. They was more for condemnation. My covenant, which they broke. You know, God didn't break his covenant. They break. They broke it. They. Amen. God never break his covenant. Amen. You know what they, the Lord said to me, and I don't like covenants break. God never break his covenant. My covenant, which I they bro which they broke, though I was a husband to them, said the Lord. Said, I married them, I take care of them. My husband take care of his wife, but they broke the covenant in marriage. They were unfaithful. They were the unfaithful one, not me. Verse 23. But this is the covenant that I will make with, with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their minds. You see, the law of the Moses was written in the in, in, in table of stone. Remember? And Moses came from the mountain with the, the stone. The law was written in the table of stone by the hands of God. And they broke the first one because they saw the people party. <laughs> And, 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 
and worshiping idols. They were doing all kinds of nasty things. And Moses got so angry, he broke. The Moses broke the first, uh, top tables of a stone. They had to go back to, to speak to God. Okay. They say, the Lord is saying, no, no, it's not that. It's not going to be no more in my new covenant. My law is not going to be no more in table of the stone. Okay. Said the Lord, I will put my law in their minds, you see, mind, and write it on their hearts, you see, on their hearts, hearts of mine. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You know that happened with Jesus, that's why I said this is a messianic prophecy, because that happened with Jesus, when Jesus came. He brought a new covenant. Amen. And the law of, of the Lord was put in the, in the believers and everybody the country is in the heart, in the mind. No more in, 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 in a stone. The, 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 the law of the Lord is now in our heart, Amen. in our mind. Yeah. Okay. Even we're speaking to the house of Israel, in the house of Judah, it happened. This happened for all of us to come to Jesus. And it's opened the door for the Jews that haven't come to Jesus yet. And for the Gentile to if they want to come to Jesus. The door is open. Amen. Yeah. But this is the coin that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Amen. My people, said the Lord. I remember one day I was in a meeting, we were worshiping, and I, in the middle of the worship, I feel like a house. I was getting to my heart and ripping my heart out. And I said, Lord, what's going on? And the friend that was around me, they saw me that I was down like morning. I don't know, I don't even know what, what could happen to me. And I heard the Lord say, Rick, I'm changing your heart. I'm giving you a new heart. And that's what happened when we born again. Amen. But you know, the job now is changing our mind. That's what the Lord said do. The many things in this world, day and night, we will change our mind according to the will and word of God, and do we do conform it to the world. Amen. You see, that's the, the, the study of the, of the word of God is nothing mundane. It's the truth of the word of God. If we want to live according, we have to meditate day and night, Amen. apply it to our life. Sometimes it takes longer for one and takes less longer for others. It depends how much you put into, how much you embrace the truth of the word of God. Amen. The word of God talk about the world was speaking to all of them, the same world, the same world. But some didn't profit the world. Why? Because they didn't put faith in the world. That's why people don't change because they don't put faith in the word. What I put faith in the word is to believe it and apply it. Yes. And not only be a hearer, but a doer. You hear and do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 34 says, No more shall a man teach his neighbor. You listen to that. Even we have a teacher, we have pastor, we have to teach the word of God now. But you know what the Lord was saying? Who's our real teacher? The Holy Spirit. And he said, those days, and those days the teacher could be inside of you. That's why he said, the teacher be inside of you, the Holy Spirit. Amen? Everybody, every person, man or woman, they come to the Lord, 
receive the teacher. See. And have the capability and the, and the possibility to learn directly from the Lord. Even we have pastor, prophet, apostle, and teacher in the, in the body of Christ. But the Holy Spirit is, is uh, the ultimate teacher. Okay? He is the one to guide on to all truth. Is the one thing the thing of Jesus and reveal it to us or turn to us and take us into all truth. The knowledge of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. So the Holy Spirit will, when you sit down, listen to someone, the Holy Spirit, you connect with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit says, That's true, that's not true. And it goes to you what to do with that. Let me repeat verse 24. No more shall every man teach his neighbor, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for the all shall know me. It's personal, that would be calling personal relationship with him. And the Holy Spirit help you to, to get to that point to know the Lord. Amen. Through the Word of God. For the all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Amen. See? That was, was when that happened when we received Jesus. That forgives our sins. Come and on. remember no more our past sins. That's right. Everybody said, the sun set free is free. Indeed. All things have passed away. All things become new. It's there in the world. Amen. And that's what the Lord was prophesying to these people here. You know, this is going to happen in your life. Now you're going to be ruled by a new covenant. And read by the law of the Spirit. Ruled by the law of the Spirit. The Spirit of life in Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. Amen. And, and look at this, it's so important. The, the Hebrews, this prophecy is repeated. Let's, let's go see there. Let, let's go. Because now you are there to um, amuse us to we get it. You see, God by the Spirit inspired the writing, the writer of the Hebrews to repeat this prophecy. Amen? Amen. It's for something there. Get it. When this prophecy was fulfilled, when Jesus went to the cross, right? Amen. And rise and rose again. So for everyone, say, okay, that's the core. You know, many Hebrew miss it. Because many didn't come to Jesus. Many came to Jesus. Some of them they despised Jesus. But that's what the prophecy right there. God was God fulfilling his prophecy for his people. That's why the, the Word of God said, you, you, you miss the day of your visitation. Look at the prophecy was walking. The fulfillment of the prophecy was walking among them. And they were like, let's stone him. Let's kill him. And the prophecy, you know, how many times we miss God, what God promised to us, pass by over, but we don't like the way it look like. Right there, the prophecy fulfilling of prophecy were walking among them, teaching them. That prophecy of Jeremiah fulfilled in Jesus. That's why Jesus said, I am the one the prophet spoke about it. I am. And when he read in the temple, the 
Proverbs is that this day, this word are fulfilled. Because it was the prophecy fulfilled. The fulfillment of the prophecy. You see, many came to him, for some, they despised him. And you are here in Hebrews 8. Let's start in verse 8. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God Almighty. Jesus Christ is Lord. Because finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant, you see, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The same word, right? The same prophecy. Mm -hmm. He said, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when, when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they did not continue in my covenant. They did not continue. You see, we have to continue Amen. in the things of God. Amen. We started, we have to continue. We cannot start and say, I may excuse it because things get tough or because me, because anything that they came against us. We have to continue in the truth and, Amen. and, and the will of God. That's right. They're not continuing. Because they did not continue my covenant, and I, dis and I disregarded them, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No then shall teach his neighbor, and know, and know his blood, say, Know the Lord, for I shall not, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to the unrighteousness, and the sin, and the Lord, and the lowliness. Lawless deed, I will remember no more. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what's important here? Repeat it. The same words. But listen. <laughs> it was taken to the Hebrews crowd. This letter. Mm -hmm. okay. Hey, listen. Remember this word? The Lord spoke to the prophet Jeremiah. Why are you not receiving it? <laughs> Let's read verse 13. And I say, a new covenant he has made the first isolate. Now, what is becoming isolate and growing old and ready to vanish away? The, the new covenant, the covenant of the Spirit through Jesus Christ. Amen. Why the Lord has appeared in this two? to the Hebrews here, because the one, hey, remember that was me, I spoke to the prophet Jeremiah, and the door is still open. <laughs> it's 
though the door is still open. And not only for the Jewish people, but for the Gentile students. Come on in. Come on in. And he will stay the same thing. It's worth it to read it. Amen. Worthy. Let's start verse 16. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. This, this is the coin that I will make with them after those days. In the same book, repeating verse 18. Said the Lord, I will put my lots into the hands, and in the knives I will write them. Then he adds, then he adds, the sin are the lowest deeds I will remember no more. I will remember no more. <laughs> see, verse 18 says, now where the remission of this, there is no longer an offering for sin. See, yeah, all the offering is, is over with Jesus. The heart is to come with an open heart with faith and come to him and say, you are my Lord. You are the fulfillment of the promise and the, and the, uh, and the prophecy. Come to you, Jesus, you are the Son of God. See, sin can remove instantly right there. No more offering, that's what we don't, we don't do. We are Christian, we don't do no, no, no rituals. Come on. We're not offering anything for our sin, only in our heart. Even when we become Christian, we sin, we have to repent with, a, with an open heart, through repentance. Because we're not longer to be living in sin, because we have been made free. We have been set free. Amen. With the Son set free and free indeed. All these things the Lord did, did it for love. He loves his people. And he said, I want to redeem my people. <laughs> and now it's going to be different. And not going to be no more, no more law and table the stone. It's going to be in the hearts and the mind. Why in the heart? It's to be sealed in your life. It's in the mind because we are teaching. We have to teach our mind. Remember Romans 12, renew your mind. <laughs> so that we don't have problems, we have mind problems. We have to renew our mind and remember, remember also who we are. I'm amazed. Many believers, they, they receive some things from the Word of God and they hold tight to those things. More when they're talking about material things, they hold to those things. But with the truth to follow, to, re, to remain in the truth, they, they don't hold those things. We have to continue. Remember, preserve us if we continue in His will. Amen. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. We have to remain. Remain, what is remain? Continue in the same part of remain. You remain in the house. In the house of God. Not do our own will, by His will. Not get revealed against the truth of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Even this prophecy but for the Hebrews people is talking to us too today. We are in Him through Jesus Christ. We are to remain in Him. Amen. We are children of the new covenant. We don't need to go to the old. We don't need to do, see Christians doing things of the old. All the rituals, they think that they lose fancy in those things. <laughs> they, 
but that's not that, that, that's not going to help for you as a Christian. Nothing. You not become more spiritual. You do those things of the all. You want to do it, do it. But they are adding nothing to you. Those things. I see many believers doing those things, all those, those uh, Hebrew people stuff. When the New Testament, you say, that, the Lord said, the Lord, go back to the old and do the old. No. That's why right, no covenant. No rituals. Come on. No offering for sins. You sin, you repent. From your heart. I see Christians doing all the festivity that the, that the Hebrew people did in the Old Testament. They were supposed to do it. Because that was required for them in the overnight. Then, you know, even if they come to the Lord, they're not supposed to do that thing anymore. Come on. Because they're the new covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Jeremiah. Chapter 31, I'm going to read verse 35 and 36. Amen. That says the Lord, who give the sun for a light by day, the ordinance of the moon, and the star for the lights by night, who disturb the sea and his waves roll. The Lord of all is his name. If those ordinances depart, from before me, said the Lord, then the sea of Israel shall also sit. What is the Lord is saying here? If those things change, what I ordain, then Israel cannot exist because they might work that my promise will change. And we know what God said is set on heaven, is established. They know the thing that God said. It's going to change. It's established. Every promise, every word of God is established. Amen. And that's what he's saying here. You see, I set the light. I set the moon. I set the night. And the way of the sea. I did it. You see, those things stop existing. Israel, the sea, we start system too. We say, God, the Lord, no, they're not, they're not going to start system because I made a promise. And the promise of God said, yes, and amen, in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See, if the ordinance depart from before me, said the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also sit from being a nation before me forever. But you know that's not going to happen. Because many, we know many, many Hebrews, many Jews, they came to the Lord Jesus. Many. And other bunch are going to come to. But already, the Lord fulfilled his word. Amen. And the Lord will fulfill every promise to you if you believe him. Amen. And the most important, you remain in him. Yes. That's the most important thing. Remain. Remain. That, remember that word. Remain. Amen. Hallelujah. 
think about this. My Lord will rush speak into your heart. It's not the Lord that's speaking to your heart. The seas is war. Embrace is true. Amen. Remain in is true. Remain in the faith. Don't move away from his promise and truth. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord.